The leader of the Wagner Group was locked in a spat with a nationalist rival as the Russian mercenary organization continued to suffer heavy losses in Ukraine, according to the Institute for the Study of War. An ISW report published on Thursday states the Wagner Group financier Yevgeny Prigozhin had recently been in an altercation with former Russian Army commander Igor Gherkin, highlighting competition among Russian nationalist groups for political influence in Russia. Gherkin accused Prigozhin of deliberately misconstruing criticism of his political ambitions as an attack on the Wagner Group forces fighting in Ukraine. Gherkin also accused Prigozhin of diverting personnel to Africa and Syria instead of deploying his mercenaries to win the war in Ukraine. The Wagner Group leader reportedly shot back by denying that he has any political ambitions and claiming that his team attempted to bribe Gherkin in an effort to silence his criticism of Wagner forces. Wagner Group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin is pictured in St. Petersburg, Russia on June 16, 2016, while Ukrainian soldiers, right, carry a bag holding a dead Russian soldier out of a destroyed building in Kupiansk, Ukraine, on December 15, 2022. Prigozhin was reportedly focused on a public argument with his Russian nationalist rival Igor Gherkin recently, while the Wagner Group suffered significant losses in Ukraine. Prigozhin then sarcastically invited Gherkin to join one of Wagner's assault units and occupied Luhansk Blast prompting the former commander to say that he would do so if sent a serious invitation. Prigozhin and Gherkin, both critics of Russian President Vladimir Putin's conduct of the war, are likely competing for influence and patronage among pro-war politicians disillusioned with the progress of the war, the ISW report states. Prigozhin and Gherkin are likely competing for favor with the same pro-war nationalist patronage networks within the Kremlin that are represented by outspoken nationalist politicians, it continues. Meanwhile, ISW said that Wagner Group mercenaries fighting in eastern Ukraine had suffered significant losses in recent months. Thursday's report cited multiple media claims that over 1,000 Wagner Group personnel were recently laid to rest at two burial sites in Russia. Many of those buried are believed to have died during fighting in the Bakhmut area, where bloody battles continue to rage between Ukrainian forces and Russia-lined fighters, including Wagner Group mercenaries. In addition, the majority of the Wagner Group personnel buried at the sites were reportedly prisoners, which was the result of the Wagner Group's overwhelming reliance on prison recruitment and its operational use of these personnel in costly assaults. The Wagner Group likely experienced significant losses in attritional offensive operations in eastern Ukraine over the past few months, ISW said. The high number of casualties is likely constraining the Wagner Group's ability to continue offensive operations at a high pace and will likely prompt further prison recruitment efforts. Former Wagner Group commander Andrei Medvedev has claimed that prisoners brought to Ukraine to fight on behalf of the mercenary group were subjected to incredibly horrible treatment, according to an interview with his lawyer that Reuters published on Thursday. Medvedev, through his lawyer, reportedly said that he personally witnessed the shooting of his comrades while he was watching because they tried to flee from the battlefield. The U.S. government announced a series of new economic sanctions aimed at the Wagner Group on Thursday, while declaring it to be a significant transnational criminal organization. ISW previously reported that critics of Putin, the Russian Ministry of Defense, Modi, and others dissatisfied with the state of the war, now in its twelfth month, had increasingly been speaking out without fear of retribution. Russia's funeral industry is experiencing unprecedented growth due to military deaths from the nearly year-long invasion of Ukraine as well as high COVID-19 fatalities, the investigative news website The Insider reported Thursday. The outlet said it spoke with funeral and crematorium workers who reported high demand from both clients and those seeking training to become service providers. The workload is quite heavy, said Boris Yakushin, a crematorium owner in Russia's third-largest city, Novosibirsk. Russia's defense ministry placed its wartime death toll at 6,000 in its most recent update in September.
while an independent media analysis of open source data identified more than double that figure this month. The boom began during the pandemic when demand for cremation increased, said Dmitry Yevsikov, a mortician and crematorium equipment specialist in annexed Crimea. In addition, land in cemeteries is physically running out, Yevslikov told the media. Yakushin identified the southern city of Rostov-on-Don near the Ukrainian border as a transshipment hub for bodies returning from Russia's special military operation. He said the city is so overwhelmed that it is building a new crematorium, which he predicted would be kept busy for the next two to three years. Crematoriums are growing exponentially in Russia, Evsikov told the insider, which estimates that the 33 crematoriums currently operating in Russia are unable to meet surging demand. One final destination for the dead soldiers was identified as the village of Bakinskaya, located 250 kilometers south of Rostov-on-Don. The New York Times reported this week at the Bakinskaya Cemetery, used by the Wagner Mercenary Group, whose fighters are taking part in the invasion of Ukraine, has expanded sevenfold in the past two months. Wagner founder Yevgeny Prigozhin confirmed last month that fighters were buried in Bakinskaya after space ran out at another Wagner cemetery and chapel 18 kilometers west. Break time equals one slash. Thanks for joining us on the Watchtower. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Break time equals one slash. We'd recommend you watch this video next.